There's nothing new about mapping. You can imagine, without being able to talk, somebody showing where you're going, you know, draw a line showing where the river is, an X where they are now, and an X where they're going to go. Viewing the Earth has really been based on technology. The Babylonians etched the lay of the land on clay tablets in 2300 BC. And then in the 15th century, with the advent of printing, they started making maps using wooden blocks. Surveyors would map by making measurements in front of them to a reference point, and then back behind to the reference point they had just passed. That information had to be transcribed into a map. From in the air, it's as if we sent out thousands of surveyors all at once. Remotely sensed data provides highly accurate measurements of the Earth and the features upon it. We rely on satellites for pictures of the Earth, for communications, for navigation, for weather. Geospatial technology has become woven throughout the fabric of how we live. About 50 years ago, people came along and started building on big old mainframes, uh, geographic information systems, which would integrate on a map information about culture, about population, about uh, demographics, about physical environment. GIS allows us to bring it all together. I used the first commercial GPS receiver. It took two men to carry it. Our antenna was a meter square piece of aluminum. We had to have a generator for it, massive batteries. The Census Bureau in the United States needed to capture all of the line work for roads, railroads, hydrography, and then boundaries. That formed the basis of the first Tiger files in the late 1980s in support of the 1990 census. Tiger was an impetus to technological developments like MapQuest, Yahoo, followed by Google. Google Earth introduced people to the coolness of place. I am here, where's the nearest Starbucks or where's the nearest hospital? Now we're all carrying around GPS. We've got really rich interfaces that allow us to do things that we would only imagine previously. On a mobile device, you are the center of the map, and the city is around you. Not you see a city and look for yourself on the map. It's putting you in the map. Say you find yourself in a location that you don't know very well. You might want to find a place to have dinner. Well, what places are around? And which places have other people rated very highly? Maybe you want a particular kind of food within a 15-minute walk. I've got not only a restaurant, but I've got the map. I can find the reviews of it. I can find out what the menu is. We're moving away from me having to actively search for something to now search is telling me what I should check out that might be interesting to me. These are the things where location and search start to come together. 